Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. Thanks to Rode Microphones. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robbo Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars. George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters. Voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, ladies! Here we go. Welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. This week, we're going to guess the mic. George, you got a sample of um, a voice track, and you sent it to us saying, guess the mic. Can we have a listen to the sample you sent? I'll be glad to. Like, right now, and I've just had coffee. So apologies for all the clicks and things. Um... But hopefully this is uh, pretty decent. Uh, you know, I can. it's not so bad from the sides if I'm doing efforts, that kind of thing. Um, but obviously, this is... Uh, we hope to upgrade. We hope to upgrade. Um, so thanks so much for your help. If you need anything else, let me know. Yeah, I do. What's the mic? <laughs> um, um, okay. Well, to give uh, you an idea, she wants to upgrade. So yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so would be price, a we're talking under 500 bucks. It's a low price point. Okay, my f- my initial thought, I mean, like, how do we want to do this? Just like one guess and that's it? Or yeah, one, one guess. Everyone throws in there 21 one guess. 21 questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 21 <laughs> questions, I reckon. 21 questions, okay. I mean, well, then, but then we can go by shape and stuff. And, nah, you don't need to do that. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm going to throw out there a brand. Yeah, I'm going to throw out there, I reckon it's the Rode video mic, and I reckon it's in the cat. Yeah, the dead oh, cat. The dead, the dead cat. cat. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Not it's a real inside dead the cat. dead cat. You are wrong on all accounts. Wow. Okay. There wow. we go. All right. Okay. So we're talking. It's not a shotgun. I'm guessing okay. it's not a I, shotgun. I think it's either one of two things, and they're pretty different. Either like a Zoom handheld audio recorder being used as a mic, or it's like a snowball. The second guess is closer. Okay. Ah. Mm-hmm. Come on, so Andrew. You're the one. Mic. It's up to you, mate. <laughs> so it's going to be. Uh, it's. I'm guessing it's a USB mic. And is it a road? No. Okay. Okay. So back to Robo. Holy crap! Uh, <laughs> it's not a Yeti. Yes, it is. Oh, really? oh I was. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. I was very close with the snowball. Like, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's a yeti. How the hell so did she wh- do that? What's the environment? It's a yeti, and you have the next part is guess what the acoustical treatment is for her setup. I know this is ridiculous. Stuff to guess. Okay. Well, it's Cl- got. It a is a closet. Okay. It is a closet. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a clothes closet. Yeah. But there's it's something more. There's stuff. something more to it than just clothing and. Um, it's it's a little bit tubby sounding, so I bet maybe she's got it sitting inside of some sort of reflection filter or a uh, like a pop a or, or a booth um, or something. Yeah, I, I reckon like a, a Harlan Hogan. Um, I, I, I hope not a Chaotica. <laughs> I told you you're gonna hate this. It's a Chaotica. <laughs> it is a Chaotica. Holy yeah. what? Yeti inside a Chaotica. God, that's eyeball. like a pretty. Yeah. Wow. Wow, it did sound really tubby. Yeah. It does sound boxy, not, doesn't it? But still not that terrible, though. Not as much as I thought it should sound. I, I yeah. thought it would have sound really bad, but that didn't sound... I told you. <laughs> and I was I like, mean, how the heck did you fit that Yeti in the eyeball? Because I've seen those, and they have. A, I have one on my shelf. And, they make two eyeballs. Like and they, well, they make the one uh, that, that can accommodate a... Uh, we call it the Magnum Edition. Um, <laughs> Does it come with a moustache? <laughs> <laughs> Did they really name it that? No, no. I just okay, made that thank up. You. Yeah. <laughs> they have one that can accommodate mics of size. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but here's wow. what's funny: like that chaotica eyeball, right, is more expensive than it's the like, mic it's inside it. Dollars, yeah. It's yeah. a two hundred dollar oh, really? thing. The oh, mic is gosh. like what a hundred less, way under a hundred. And and it's okay. Just you're the forced to buy one of them. You're forced to buy one of them. Which one do you buy? The Yeti. All the day. Yeti. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. You know what? <laughs> the Yeti is an interesting mic. It's one of the first good sounding USB mics. I'd argue that and the Apogee mic. Those are two. Yeah. The Apogee mic is a proper like large diaphragm capsule or medium sized capsule, right? And what the Yeti is doing is um, is electric capsules, and there's multiple ones in there, right? So there's a stereo. 
That's capsule. the problem is the Yeti's got like too much going on with it. Right. And it's trying it's, to be too many, ha- make too many people happy. And there's ways to mess it up. And it's got a really stupid stand too. It's a bizarre shape. It's extremely heavy. It People misplace it all the time. Like yeah, I just saw a video two days ago where the mic is right on the edge of the frame and it's, and it's you know, the top of the mic yeah. is pointing towards the person. And I'm just like, holy cow. Like people really don't know even how to use this mic. So um, it's, it's a and weird And aren't the one. snowballs also dual element, like condenser and I believe dynamic they are. or something? I don't think yeah, they're, yeah, there's, they're not dynamic condenser, but they have like a- Or they're stereo and mono. I'm not sure. The, the original Snowball was extremely basic, and but it did have a switch on it that changed the way it sounded. Direction, yeah. I think so. Something. But the, the 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 Yeti, you know, one of the weird thing about a Yeti is it's a THX certified mic. No, now, I don't know that what mean? that means in terms of pro audio because the two don't mix. THX you paid is, enough to is Tom a, Holman to. Well, there you go. THX is a consumer thing, right? For well, it's yeah. not consumer only. It's it's a consu- It's um. What do you call it? It's, it's like a playback setup. It's a, yeah, it's a playback it's a, format. It's, a, yeah. it's not even a format. It's a it's, no, a, it's like a setup. It's a measurement of quality to yeah. be THX certified. Well, yeah, there you go. It's right? a standard. Yeah, there you go. It's a standard, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's a standard for monitoring or playback systems. That's right. So how they got a microphone certified under THX, I don't know how. Well, but you pay enough money. Part of that mic is... <laughs> How quiet it is! The self noise as a USB mic and a cheap one at that is remarkable. It's a it's really really the quiet cheapest. mic. I mean, when yeah, you yeah. look at it, it's like the mic, the headphone monitoring, mind you, a stereo and mono mic. It's like that's like the stereo mono omni cardioid. I mean, it does stereo cardioid omni and fig eight. It does a headphone gain control. It has a gain for the mic. Yep. All on the mic, you know, all those things. Does um, it have a blend? It does it not just... have a blend control, I don't think. It's just got one knob on the front for headphones. One, on the... And it's like $150, right? It's, it's a very affordable. And, and these, these things are sold at Apple stores. They're sold on yeah. Amazon. They're sold everywhere. I mean, they have probably made it's the whole a million company. of these things yeah. over the last 10 years. So hmm. um, so they, they get better. They keep re-releasing it, and and, they, and it gets better. So am I going to still recommend it? No, because I think it's still, from an industrial design, a ridiculous mic. It, do, it doesn't have a good way to mount to a stand. Um, it's really bulky and heavy. Um, and, and the reason she called me is she's like, I do not want the stigma of saying, when I'm asked, what equipment do you have, of saying, I have a Yeti inside a chaotic eyeball. <laughs> yeah. And so she was like, what yeah. should I buy? And I recommended some, you know, reasonably affordable sub $500, you know, mics. I told her to get an SSL2 interface and I'll wait to hear back from her. I said, you know, the danger we run into here is you're going to buy all this gear, set it all up, and it may not sound quite as good. Which is Yeti. weird to say because it's just, it's a happy act. Sometimes a good sounding booth, like especially a closet, is completely a happy accident, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and and especially like whisper rooms. I had another thing came up with a whisper room where the client said, "Okay, I want to tune my booth. What should I do?" And I said, Are you, "What do you mean tune it? Sounds okay." And they're like, "Really? I haven't done anything." And I'm like, "Well, whatever. You have the mic and the broken. sweet spot. It's in yeah. the every room has a sweet spot where the mic is going to be really sound great because you're in a null, a null point, right, where all the frequencies cancel each other out." It's like the golden spot, right? And if you put the mic there, it's going to sound damn good, right? But if you move it three, four, five inches one way or the other, it's going to sound not as good. So that happens sometimes, and it's impossible to predict. None of the acoustic engineers out there have models for this stuff. None of, the, none of these guys, nobody has figured it out. They, you would think by now with supercomputers and AI and all these brains... They could take a box, whatever the size is, and then predict exactly where to put the mic. Like if you put it right here, it's going to sound great, you know. Yeah. But they don't. That, that just doesn't exist because they, they. Every time I talk to acoustics guys that are like, you know, the ones with the degrees that use the big computers and the softwares and measurements and blah blah blah, their answer to all the questions I every time I mention small booths, they say, "Well, it's too small," and that's right. all there is to it. And I'll tell you what, I, I can't tell you how many sessions Lori Allen recorded for Nickelodeon and everything in a closet that was 18 inches deep. 
I had to, I could barely fit in there. I mean, it was tiny. So, you know, and, and, and Lori will do some pretty animated, loud characters. So yeah. she's, she's hitting. Cause sometimes, I mean, if, if all you ever did was whisper, you could get away with like Absolutely. pretty much almost anything, but it's, yeah. it's, it's like those actors who do cartoons where they're just like really dynamic. animated and loud. Yeah. It's like, you're exciting the whole room and now you're, yeah, now, now you're exposed. You know? We're really going on a tangent cause we mentioned Lori, but yeah, I took everything out of her really tiny closet, right? All the materials that were in there. And I put it into a closet twice the size, so she's in a bigger space, and it still sounds good. So figure that out. Hmm. Isn't that weird? So less material, less stuff, therefore more reflective space. surfaces in a bigger space. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have to buy or add anything else. I, I no, I, no. We're using everything that was in the original space. We just redistributed it into the bigger. I was like, I'll just use what you got and let's see how it sounds. It's been that way for two years. So, I mean, there's the, the thing is you can't predict it. And fact of the matter is sometimes the size of the booth, what's inside it, the cost of the gear still doesn't make a hill of beans. When it sounds good, it is good. Exactly. But the, the, yeah. the crazy thing you is this. You pro I, gear at some point in your career. You don't want to just get by after a while. And and the crazy thing about that setup is that it's it's like – we all know that the booth is going to be the first thing that affects it. So she's got right. a decent booth. And it's okay. Yeah. My, the, the, qu- the thing I'd want to hear is like, let's hear it without the eyeball. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, exactly. is that making it worse? <laughs> it, exactly. Yeah. Like, Anytime um, there's an eyeball or a reflection filter or any of those things that go anywhere near the mic, I immediately say, please remove it and get me a yep. sample. In this case, I didn't because we're buying new gear. I said, let's just get all that new gear set up we're not going to use the eyeball. We're going to, you know, we'll take stock. We're going to get some panels. We're going to kind of do up your booth. We'll do a little quickie makeover and then we'll take stock as to what we should do. But yeah, we're going to leave the eyeball out of it for now. Totally. Yeah. It's really fascinating. And then what, what was the other thing that somebody made a little, a little foam box, yeah, you know, you're we on that thread. It, yeah. Andrew. Uh, somebody's <laughs> yeah, like, Hey, it. I made this little box for my mic with a cotton, you know, batting and how did, you know, like, what do you like guys their own porta booth. Yeah, and they're like, what do you yeah. think? You know, we've watched people make these thousands of times, right? And always causes a conversation, you know? And of course, my very first thing is, what does it sound like? Why are we all speculating? What does it sound like? And he finally did post something and, and I evaluated it and he did a good job of recording himself with, without the box, with a mic deep in the box, with a mic at the edge of the box. And in the end, it made a little difference. It didn't help that much. And the further the mic was from the box, the better it sounded. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, exactly. if it was all the way in the back, it was sounded terrible. And if he brought it all the way out to the front, it sounded pretty good. But it didn't sound all that different from the room without the box. So right. well, because it's sticking out of the box. Right. So then, <laughs> what's the box? So doing? what's it really doing? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's like it's it's listening to the null of the microphone and mm-hmm. yeah. So it I, I I love those little puzzles and thanks for playing you guys because I knew that you would be loathe to find out what it was that <laughs> exactly. was actually being used. I'm shocked. Yeah, yeah. So is the uh, is the no, uh, I'm, I'm is the Yeti a large diaphragm condenser? No. You know? No, it's, it's not. not. It's it's got multiple electric capsules. And that's what's amazing is they're able is, to is technology one of them a large such, diaphragm. I don't I don't know? think so. I don't yeah. think so. Like uh, the, the the technology of electric mics Maybe we can geek out about this sometime. We could have like a mic designer on or something. Pre-polarized. Yeah, pre-polarized. Is that what they also call it? Pre-polarized I think capsules. So, yeah. Um, the technology of that is incredibly good now. And there's for a good reason. Every cell phone has one or two or three or four. Um, and so they're made by the uh, what, the billions? So they've gotten pretty good at making them, thanks to especially Apple. I mean, they they throw away more capsules that don't pass their QC than probably Blue Mike will ever make. Yeah. Right? So sure. they've yeah. gotten damn good at making very, very cheap, good-sounding mics that are low noise. Like, it's 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 remarkable. An iPhone in a good booth or a U47 in a crappy booth, take the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. I, I say, every, like, if you have a good-sounding studio, you could record... A great sounding take with an iPhone mic. Is it? Would you choose to? Of course not. But you could. 
if you had to, yep. if you had no yep. other choice. Like your preamp just literally caught fire. It was made by personas or something and it <laughs> happened to catch fire <laughs> sorry personas you know, no you're not you're not sorry <laughs> hey I owned, I owned a lot of personas gear back in the day um yeah. i still love their monitors um no i it, it, and, and you're dead in the water like crap they need this right now i'm gonna pull out my iphone and record that take i'm gonna yeah. edit it and send it off and just put it in the right spot if the acoustics yeah. are good you're, you're gonna be in pretty good shape so yep and and also with the THX, I was thinking about that, and maybe it's to do with the headphone monitor. It could be. Maybe that. Maybe that's what it's they the are output, actually not the input. Yeah. Right. They may, maybe that's the. They're like, well, we can't really certify the mic, but there is a <laughs> DA converter in there, and there is a headphone amp, so we can certify. So that. imagine being the salesman in the yep. shop. Well, it's a pretty shit microphone, but the headphone output's pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so here's the thing about how successful the Yeti is, because good old Behringer comes out with a mic, and I believe they call it the Bigfoot. <laughs> is that right? No, I wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> oh my god, bit. yes! Like, like they. Just like with the Mackie preamps, where they couldn't like they're you know, shameless. You look at like there's extra, like their extra G mic preamps, or however you say them, are mm-hmm. the same letters as Xenix. Onyx. They have the Xenix yeah. uh, mixer instead of the Onyx. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're like, shameless, and like they've they been sued many with... times. But they are a big enough company. Their parent company is I can't remember what it's called, like Music or something. They had the lawyers. Um, but I, I mean, <laughs> it's literally the Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> It's the Bigfoot. <laughs> the Behringer Bigfoot. I know. And it's like on a U stand, it is like, they're just like, oh, successful product. We'll do that too. And the current yep. Yeti. It's got a new button and a volume button. How much cheaper of a USB mic can you make? The USB, the Yeti, which is branded by Blue, the ultimate USB mic for professional recording. It literally oh says God. that, it's, right? It's, it's ninety nine ninety nine. According to who? Okay. I'm 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 looking at a Behringer for eighty nine dollars, and it's the same thing. Dollars <laughs> less. Figure eight Omni cardioid figure eight. Right. So stereo like dual. Yep. Dual figure eight or like left right. Yep. Then Omni. Yeah, it's the same product. It's the same product. But how much? And okay, wait, wait. Does the is, Yeti have a? How much cheaper can you yeah. make it? It's already a hundred dollars. <laughs> they still found ten dollar margin. They're like, we can still make this for ten dollars cheaper, and we can sell it. And it's worth eating their lunch for that ten dollars. And I, like, that's I, how. there's no way in hell it sounds as good as the Yeti. There's just no way. I can't. I mean, I I would be shocked if it sounded as, as good as the Yeti. I can't even say. I, I I can't believe I'm talking about the Yeti mic right now. Sorry, but but yeah, it's just it's abominable. It's it's abominable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, honestly, it's a testament to consumer technology trickling up into pro audio, and the way they can. It, at scale, you can produce something of pretty darn good quality at a really, really affordable prices. And this is just, this is the way the industry is just going to keep going. Like the yeah. gear that you can buy off the shelf at Best like these mics you can buy at Best Buy. You know, like your yeah. standard home theater electronics store. You don't have to go to Guitar Center to buy Yeti. You can buy it at Best Buy. You know, it's an impulse buy for podcasters. The, yep. the reality is I wouldn't be unwilling to bet that just made by some massive manufacturing company and we could go make the Pro Audio Suite mic and get the same thing. I mean, down to the chip and the element, and we would just make our own body. Well, I guarantee and, a search on YouTube. I mean, it's like, it's like the Harlan Hogan, what was it? The V, the, um, what's that mic that he had? The VO1A, was yeah. it called? Yeah. Yeah. It's a Marshall mic. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it says MXL. We know it's an MXL. Yeah. Right. I'm looking it's... at a video right now of a teardown of the Yeti, you know, where they take it all apart. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's got an XY pair of capsules stacked on top of each other. That's what they're doing. Oh, there's actually, there's, there's actually, how many capsules are in there? There are, there are three capsules in there inside the head wow. of the mic. One for each toe of the Yeti. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a great guy I love watching, and I know we can wrap this up, but there's a great guy I love watching called DIY Perks, P-E-R-K-S. And he does a video on making a USB microphone. Oh, yeah. Check I saw it out. that one. It's great. Yeah. It's really great because you guys will dig it because he found the capsule, the exact same capsule that comes inside the CAD E100S mic. Right. 
Oh, I've seen it's this. The, and then, then he suspends it in this really cool suspension. Yeah, he makes this like, yeah, like, It's like a piece of thing. art, too. But the yeah, thing yeah. is, he's really good at fabricating, right? So he's really good at brass, and he likes to really he solders the brass and polishes yeah, yeah. the brass. and He's really good at making it look cool, too. Um, but yeah. the end result is right there in front of you. He's like, I'm using like a $4 preamp, and I'm using... <laughs> Like really, really, really cheap components. And then he compares it to a U87 right there on the video. Yeah. And you're just like, gobsmacked you're just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it looked really cool too yeah i love i love yeah. that guy and he's yeah. I, the video the the projects are so complicated like just to do step one would take me a month yes well first we're going to bend the brass into this shape and solder it onto this ring and drill holes around it like that would no uh, no that would take <laughs> that would take me a week you know you don't and yeah. you don't see any of his like trial and errors no, not really. I mean, he'll say, like, I made it this way, and it didn't sound good, and I figured out why. I had to drill right, holes. Right, and then I put these holes in the Right, ring. and then it sounded yeah. better. But yeah. he didn't, yeah, it's like, it's still a YouTube video that has to be 20 minutes, you know, and has to, it doesn't, you know, it's the format. But, uh, oh, my gosh, it's really, it's really cool. It's, I don't know what it means to the industry, but quality will always will out in terms of manufacturing, something that you can count on to last 20, 30, 40 years has to be made with the best components. Um, yeah. You know, but you got to start somewhere. And I guess a Yeti ain't such a bad place to start. It's just, it's just a abysmally difficult bike to put on a proper mic arm or stand. Yeah. It just doesn't, it has a place to screw in a mic stand, but it has no, it's heavy. It's heavy. It, it has pivot. no knuckle. You can't angle it. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's uh, it's it's far from ideal for pro use. I think. Yeah, that's why you need and, a lazy child to stand there and hold it for you. <laughs> right, we call that Hollywooding. <laughs> if you're on set and someone says to you, uh, "Just go Hollywood," that that means you have to literally stand and hold that thing during the take. <laughs> that's what they no. call it. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> like, let's say, oh, go grab a C stand to hold up that diffuser. Oh, fuck it, just go Hollywood. Fuck it, just Hollywood. It. And then someone's got to stand there and hold the diffuser. <laughs> oh god! Like, let all the blood run out of their arms. Yeah, that's yeah. what they call it. Hollywood, that thing. Nice. <laughs> the Yeti. The Yeti sure does. Oh wait, no, that is not a large diaphragm. Where's the cat? It's like medium size. It's 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 basically it's an X Y pair and then a single. Right. Probably Omni, I guess. Yeah, one's got to be an Omni. You can't fake an Omni. An Omni is an Omni. But yeah, it's like medium-sized cool. diaphragms there. Mm -hmm. um, but they are... I mean, the shock absorption is just like goop, <laughs> neoprene, whatever. I mean, and guys have videos on YouTube saying, I hate this mic, stop buying it. It has 58,000 views. And it's a video It's a video about hating on the Yeti. Do you think that's hurting Yeti's sales? <laughs> no, nope, not, not one iota. <laughs> Probably helps no. it actually. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> if they if they're smart, they'll link to this episode as well. <laughs> so I so guess. because it's an electric, it will eventually lose its charge and be a piece of junk. That's right? how electric mics work because they're pre-charged, so they have a yeah, lifespan. They, they do have a lifespan. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, there's a, there's an argument so. against electric I, mics. I believe they do. Let me make sure, but I think so. Ask Doctor Google. Yeah. The electric element. I don't. I as know a, a ten-year-old. Uh, electric microphone. Oh, okay. It's a battery. It says, I mean, the capsule is a battery. It says it lasts thirty to forty years, <laughs> according to Shore. I've Shore. I've I've had electric mics die on me, but they said I they said maybe mics. after ten yeah. years you'll lose a decibel of output. This is according to okay. Shure. Permanently biased condensers. That's what, what they call it. it. What did I say? Charged or pre-charged? Same yeah. idea. Permanent An electric bias. or yeah. permanently biased condenser element that uses phantom power to supply its impedance converter. Um, and so, yeah, a 10-year-old electric microphone that we have has lost about one decibel of sensitivity in 10 years. So we expect about 30 to 40 life years of lifespan. That's interesting. There weren't, I don't think there were permanently biased electric mics 40 years ago. I think they came out in the seventies. Maybe, yeah. I believe. I, I I guess the seventies or the late sixties. So maybe the oldest um, ones have stopped working. <laughs> uh, yeah. Rat hole. Indeed. Ooh, that one a lot of places. <laughs> you, usually, your battery powered mics are the ones that are also electric condensers. Usually, yeah. Well, those E one hundred S's, the original one called the E one hundred, literally had an internal battery 
inside the mic. Okay. That eventually you had Piece to replace. Piece of trivia. What very renowned microphone had a battery option? The uh, 416? Nope. Uh, Bravo. Uh, I don't know. Very renowned microphone with a battery option. Very renowned. With a battery option. Like from a German company? Mm-hmm. Mm. Andrew? Uh-huh. Well, not internally. I mean, you could change it, but yeah. The only one I can think of is the Rode NTG 4 Plus or whatever it's called. Yeah, that's a that's modern mic. Oh, you're talking about an old a one. A U87, they had a battery power? A U87 really? had a battery option. No. Yes, sir. Wow. Really? Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Well, there you go. I've learned something new. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite recorded using Rode NTG5s and Source Connect, edited by Andrew Peters and mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging with tech support from George the Tech Wizard. Help us share the show with more people and get your hands on exclusive content by contributing to our Patreon page. See patreon.com forward slash Pro Audio Suite. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group to leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good Drop us a note at our website, theproaudiosuite.com.